So as you know, I have a lot of bike carb conversion themed videos on my channel. And here's a question I get really often on many of them. What was the purpose of fitting the carbs? Here's another one. So what kind of advantage do you have with bike carbs? Yet another one. Why did you decide to go with carbs and not 20 BITBs with a standalone ACU? Also another one. And I really like this one. So today, while we are waiting for my damn brake parts to arrive from the damn galvanizing plant, we are going to answer this question and we are going to talk about the benefits and drawbacks of doing a bike carb conversion on your engine. And also, I'm going to play my new intro for you. So why would you want to do a bicarb conversion on your engine? What are the advantages of bicarbs when compared to fuel injection? And the answer to that is none. There are no advantages of bicarbs when compared to fuel injection. And there you have it. That was pretty much it for today. As always, thanks a lot for watching and don't forget to share, like, comment and subscribe and I'll be... Nah, it's not really that simple. because. The question isn't really that simple. Asking what are the advantages of bicarbs when compared to fuel injection is the same as asking, you know, what are the advantages of a two-seater sports car when compared to a family wagon. It really depends who you're asking. If you're asking a bachelor who's low on confidence and thinks he will pick up chicks by using a two-seater sports car, then there are many advantages. But if you ask a father of three who's trying to go shopping, then the sports car is super, super useless. And it's the same with bike carbs. It really depends who you're asking. So today we're going to be answering two questions. The first is, what are the benefits, advantages and drawbacks of bike carbs? But we're also going to be answering another question and that is who the bike carb conversion is for. Because it's really not for everybody. And we're going to be answering that question by taking a little self-assessment quiz that you can all take with me and answer for yourself whether a bike carb conversion is right for you. Before we take the quiz, let's just get something out of the way really quickly. And let's just briefly talk about bike carbs versus car carbs, like for example, a you know, set of Solx carburetors or twin Weber carburetors. Now, not all car carbs are made the same, of course, you know. Some have been made with economy in mind, while others, you know, are more focused to giving the car, you know, a sporty, you know, performance and responsive character. But when comparing a set of modern bike carbs, like for example, my CBR 600 F4 carbs, versus, you know, the vast majority of car carbs, bike carbs have many, many advantages. The first one is very obvious and it's cost. A set of bike carbs is going to cost you anywhere between $100 or $150 used, while a set of used carburetors, for example a set of twin Webers, is going to cost you anywhere between 3 and 5 times as much. A set of bike carbs is also a lot simpler and easier to tune because it has less jets and less adjustments than a set of car carbs. Bike carbs also cope better with high difference and they are better when it comes to cold starts. They also have better mileage uh, and they're simpler and easier to service because they simply have you know less components and less parts. They're also cheaper to service. Now don't get me wrong, a set of twin Webers on a 4AG is insanely cool in my book, but it will end up costing a lot more than a bicarb conversion and it's still going to require a you know, intake manifold, throttle linkage and everything else you're going to require to do a full bicarb conversion 
and it still won't, you know, sound any better or be any more responsive, you know, than a bicarb conversion. Okay, so that was carb versus carb. Now let's talk bicarbs versus fuel injection. Now this is where it gets a little bit more complicated and there are several questions you have to ask yourself uh, and several factors you have to take into account before deciding whether a bicarb conversion is a good move. Because it's not necessarily a good idea to swap fuel injection for bicarbs. So now we're going to take the quiz. And this is how we're going to do it. There's just five questions. When you see a question appear on the screen, simply answer it and write down the answer. At the end, we are going to do a little bit of a calculation and we're going to determine whether a bicarb conversion is a good move for you or whether you should just leave it be. If the car you want to do the bicarb conversion on is your daily driver, then a bicarb conversion might end up costing you too much in the long run. A set of modern bicarbs is capable of pretty decent MPG, but they are still less efficient than fuel injection. And a bicarb converted engine, depending on how well it's tuned, will have anywhere between 10 to 30% worse MPG than the same engine on you know, multi-point fuel injection. Mr. Venturi may have a really cool surname, but unfortunately his effect is no match for fancy pants computer circuitry. Also, bike carbs, like all carbs, need periodic maintenance and they need it more often than fuel injection. You know, most servicing of bike carbs can be done with just a screwdriver but it still needs to be done more often than fuel injection. Uh, a set of injectors doesn't need to be synchronized and it needs cleaning far, far less often than a set of any sort of carburetors. So taking all that into account, a bicarb conversion can be considered, you know, project car rather than daily driver material. Okay, this was a really big factor for me. Yes, my car did come with fuel injection from the factory, but the fuel injection system in it is 30 years old and I could never get it to run right. I always had some sort of problem. Either, either the idle was erratic or my uh, stupid flap style airflow meter was causing some sort of issue um, or the cold start system, you know, was acting up or I had a vacuum leak, there was always something. And because the car is 30 years old, uh, you know, and went through a lot of previous owners, some of which were cheap and idiots, and installed parts from different 4AGs, you know, I ended up with a Frankenstein engine that had the wrong distributor, the wrong throttle body for my intake manifold, and a bunch of other wrong parts I, that I could never get to agree with each other. I troubleshooted the engine a million times, I read the factory service manual hundreds of times, I asked dozens upon dozens questions of questions on forums, but I could never get it to run right. There was always something wrong with it. And after a while, it got really old and I got really sick of it. And this brings us to a problem with fuel injection. When something goes wrong, it could be a million of things. And before you know it, you will have disassembled half of your engine bay, you know, just to test all of these components because they have pretty similar symptoms when something goes wrong. And then you will have replaced that one sensor and then you're going to test the engine again and you are still going to have the same problem you begin, you know, that you had in the beginning. And this was my experience for a relatively long period of time and I decided, you know, that had to stop. And if you can relate to this, uh, you know, if it all sounds really familiar, then bike carbs might be a lifesaver for you. When I decided to do a bike carb conversion, a lot of people told me, you know, don't do it, it's stupid, um, bike carbs are a huge pain in the bum to tune. To be honest, in my case, tuning a set of bike carbs 
was a lot more straightforward than messing about with all that 30 year old fuel injection junk. The engine right now idles butter smooth, it feels nice, it feels responsive and it starts up every time. When I had fuel injection before, the idle was always either bouncy or all over the place or it was too high. Uh, the engine, starting the engine was a hit a miss, you know, so it's two different worlds. And as I said, if it all sounds too familiar, then bike carbs might help you fall in love with your car all over again. If you have a fuel injection system from 2008 or maybe even newer and it runs and performs well and you love your car and you're enjoying it, honestly, just to leave it be. And maybe in the future, if you ever get really, really bored of it, do a bicarb conversion. But right now, leave it be and enjoy it. If you are, then the charms of carburation might be wasted on you. A bicarb conversion noticeably changes the character of an engine, but it's unlikely that it will add any sort of horsepower you know, when compared to a modern fuel injection system. If you're lucky and you tune it right, you might get like 5 or 10 horsepower, you know, when compared to a 30 year old multi point fuel injection system. But if you bike carb convert something built in 2007, you are probably not going to get any sort of horsepower. You will gain noticeable horsepower if you bike carb convert a single point fuel injection system or an engine that's running some sort of lame, old fashioned, inefficient carbs. So if you think a bike carb conversion will give you a dyno chart you can brag about, you're in the wrong place. A bike carb conversion is more about making the engine more enjoyable to drive rather than giving it massive amounts of power. If you want big power, just do a swap or slap a turbo on it. Carburetors sound better than fuel injection. You can inject but I won't listen. Yes, ITBs come close, but it's not quite the same. If you ask me, carburetors are beautiful, throaty little baritones that can sing the sweetest songs of internal combustion. If you don't believe me, just listen. Also, carbs can make an engine a true joy to drive. As I said, they change the character of an engine rather than add horsepower. And they will make the engine seem more lively, more dynamic and should beckon you to drive it like you stole it even more than it did before. <laughs> Carburetors are friends of gearheads. They require almost zero special tools to be tuned. They speak to the visceral side of the gearhead and will help you develop a sort of a sixth sense that will be able to tell you when the carbs are running right and when they aren't. Trust me, when you tune the engine with them properly, you will be able to tell. And if you want this sort of experience, if you can relate to it, then carburetors can take you on an amazing journey, putting you in the shoes of laptop and smartphone free generations of hot rodders and racers of old that had more fun with a screwdriver than you could ever imagine. Also, bike carbs are great for carburetor first timers because they are not nearly as overwhelming as some carburetors can be. On a typical set of motorcycle constant velocity carburetors, you basically have two jets, a needle and a pilot adjustment screw to worry about. 
Okay, so those were all of the questions. Now it's time to check your answers and see how many points you scored. So now I'm going to show you a table with the correct answers. So here you can see the table. In the first column, you can see the question. In the second column, you can see the correct answer. And in the last column, you can see how many points that answer brings you. So now let's add up the points. So did you add up the points? How many did you score? If you scored four points or less, I say you shouldn't do a bicarb conversion. You should stick to the comfort and familiarity of mother fuel injections boring bosom. If you scored six points, you are borderline. I say think it over again. Sleep on it. And do it tomorrow. If you scored eight points, then a bicarb conversion is definitely a good idea for you. If you scored 10 points, then you should drop whatever the hell you're doing and go buy a set of bicarbs right now. And there you have it. That's pretty much it when it comes to this self-assessment video. And I hope that I managed to answer the question for you whether a bicarb conversion is a good idea for you. And also I hope I kept you kinda entertained along the way. So I think that's enough talking for one day. As always, thanks a lot for watching and thanks for staying tuned to the D4A channel for so long. It's a channel that has driving in its name, but has been publishing videos about a car stuck on wooden jack stands for the past year. I hope we get off those damn jack stands really soon and have some amazing experiences we can all share together. As I said, thanks for being with this channel for so long. I really appreciate you guys. D4A out. I just stole the scar. Yeah, the pen.